What's up, guys? Kid Crusher here, and uh, thanks for being subscribed to The Drain here on YouTube. And uh, today I decided to uh, do a little track-by-track -track commentary to on the, my, the most recent release, Distorted Dimensions, to give uh, a little bit of input on the making of the album, what makes each track so special, and overall the album so special to me. And uh, the album just came over just a little over a year ago, March 31st 2018 so i thought i gotta do something to pay tribute that and to help promote the album's release because promoting music this day in today's day is a freaking nightmare when it comes to zuckerberg's platform fuck you man <laughs> okay so first and foremost i gotta introduce the album is distorted dimension before distorted dimension i originally was going to take a small break um after murder murder 3d because it was such a, a massive project which felt like i was working on it for like three years which i think it was that and all the music videos put together so originally i you know with the 10 year celebration i did back to the kick rusher in 2015 and there i was just going to be like you know i'm going to take a little break and uh work on some side projects and also try to make uh, america happen but america keeps getting put in the roadblock after roadblock so it's it's more of i get bored of you know trying to get shows happening and also i get bored of taking a break so i end up getting straight into making music again so quickly it's just just so much like a massive an addiction to me i just can't stop that's why i've got so many albums it's it's not a job to me it's just what i do <laughs> i just love to work on something well anyway before i was going to do another kick crusher album i said to people i was going to work on a new cape man and a new rectal birth album and they are still coming I've uh, got a little bit of work done here and there on both of those projects, which is just stuff. It's low priority, so it's nothing that gets, you know, a lot of attention at the moment. And that I'll get into later, a post-album of what I'm doing at the moment. <coughs> but uh, yeah, Distorted Dimension came into play probably around 2016, 2017, or I guess it started 2016, late 2016. And I started collaborating, I would say, the first song was something that was meant to be collaborating with another band. And uh, that was uh, uh, the track number five, I Want to Be a Killer, I was uh, featuring with Cobra. They approached me about doing a song for them. So uh, during during the making of I Want to Be a Killer, I just thought, you know, I want to do an album that sounds metal all the way through it. I've never done that. And I've always wanted to do that. So starting with that song, I'm like, I'm going to do a freaking metal album. <laughs> Track number one, Decade of Death. Decade of Death is a tribute to my 10 years of basically Kid Crusher's killing spree. I have no freaking idea how it's gone on this long, but it still has, and how I've written so many songs about killing people, it's just ridiculous. Jeez. So, um, I, I, I can't really describe how Kid Crusher's killing spree began, because when I wrote the character to begin with, I didn't really think too far ahead, you know? I was just studying serial killers on, you know, trying to make a, it's its own version of a serial killer in music. So really, having a decade killing spree on, on music is, is just absolutely insane. So it's a little salute to, you know, 10 years in my career, which is now almost gone into 15 years. Decade of Death is that, a tribute to that. And uh, the sound behind this song is uh, actually influenced by the uh, PlayStation 4 game, Doom. If you've played the, the recent one, it has very electronic death metal sound and that was what i was first digging for when i started this album i'm like i need but to, my kickstarter to start this project was i was digging so fucking deep to try and get this sound there's a there's a song on the soundtrack of the doom soundtrack for the game um it's uh, actually produced by a producer in in australia um by the name of Mick Gordon and uh, when I first heard it I was just like fucking blown away it's like this is what I've been trying to produce for a long time it's like hip hop death metal everything electronic it's just insane and I love doing dubstep but a lot of people in Metal Murder 3D uh, reviews didn't really appreciate it that much so I like I, I gone away from the dubstep a little bit but I still have those stingers in there every now and then so the Doom soundtrack was uh, definitely a high point of where I was trying to go with this this album to begin with you know i didn't want to saturate it with it obviously it changed after that song and i gotta give a salute 
to my boys Gravetown Productions who helped put together this album and this song was you know the tester for them you know I put it out there for them and they had a lot of stress I imagine like were they they're in a different different country as well so it's this whole album is so special because it was done through translation and very little English <laughs> and I work with a lot of people from different countries so it's it's, it's very crazy the amount like a lot of people know my collaborations with uh, the Baldi Festival guys from Europe so uh, yeah I'd love to give a shout out to Greytown um, I'd love to pronounce their city but I cannot pronounce it but they're pretty close to Russia somewhere around there <laughs> so yeah Track number two, Rumors. Rumors was the second track produced by Greytown, and so this is practically going in chronicle order of when they, uh, you know, came back. As soon as I finished Decade of Death, I'm like, you know, let's do the same kind of thing, but you know, go with a bit of a Slipknot vibe because a lot of people love my Slipknot covers, but you know, I don't really want to keep progressing with Slipknot covers. But uh, while Slipknot are a massive influence for me. I have to do something like them, but uh, you know, not not too much like them. We actually produced a, a separate song. Uh, before I think during the same time as Rumors or, or just after it but it sounded a little too much like a Slipknot song so I'm like we need to try and twist it away <laughs> and make it a little bit more different because uh, the last thing I wanted to sound you know I know I told them to do that with the Doom Decade of Death song but you know I don't want to be a complete r replica I'll, obviously every band out there can say you know you are ripping off this band etc i still think everyone is a replica of someone in some shape or form anyway you know like everything comes from something it's just a twist of something else with a different type of flavor we mixed in you know <laughs> but rumors definitely a complete fucking hit i did not think this was going to be a massive hit on the album like it's just really amazing how you put an album together and you just throw it out there and you got to kind of guess what the singles are to do the videos for but uh, also sometimes songs that you didn't think were going to be hits uh, are become hits and the ones you think are going to be hits and not hits. <laughs> but Rumors, I think, is uh, is pretty much the, the favorite aside from the single in your nightmares. And Rumors, I, I could go into the, the, the title if you want, but, you know, there's a lot of people out there that, that say they know me and say rumored shit about me, especially being a public figure. There's a lot of crap that people spread about you and they believe, but they never get my side of the story. You know, I've heard several versions of different shit that I've done, but shit that I've never never done or to, and said by people I've never met. <laughs> so this is kind of a fuck you, especially to... I'm not going to give anybody that satisfaction of saying who it's about because it's about several people, you know, but um, the amount of feedback I got from people saying, you know, the same type of shit, you know, they relate to rumors because the, the, there's plenty of people out there doing this to them, you know, crying wolf and talking shit. So I'm glad this is an anthem to fuck you to some people like that. But I guess don't feed the trolls, but, you know, fuck you anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to do that one laugh. Track 3, White Noise. White Noise was actually a very, very last minute filler, and that's why it's a minute of just bullshit. Because <laughs> originally there was a track there called Mosh Pit. And Mosh Pit is going to be featuring on my next mixtape because it's like a deleted song. You know, every album has a deleted song. And Mosh Pit got deleted very, very last minute. Um, personally, I think it's because of the chorus of Mosh Pit. I could never uh, find my way to like it. I was always, uh, I, I reached out to other people to try and collaborate on it. And uh, I had one guy actually record on it and I didn't like that either. And then, you know, I tried several different hooks. I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna try another hook cause I did record a hook which went on the last master of it. And I think probably a week before it came out, I ditched it and I was just like, fuck. So white noise is just white noise there to, to fix an error in the track listing. So it's just a bunch of shit. So I apologize for that, but you know, I didn't want to leave it empty. I didn't want to narrow down the track listing because 13 was the number I wanted to put out. It's kind of an OCD thing I had there. I don't know, but that's what why noise is. 
Track four, Shadow Man. Shadow Man was actually produced to sound like a corn song, so you can already say, yeah, this song sounds like corn because it's it's basically influenced by corn. <laughs> but I wanted it to be a darker corn song, obviously with rap, because uh, you know, obviously my music career is heavily influenced by you know new metal, uh, early '90s, 2000, Linkin Park, Corn, Slipknot. So I've always got this album is is heavily. You know, like I said, it's it's a metal album that I wanted to to the, the, the metal album I've always wanted to do. I'd say wouldn't have the capabilities of doing, and this album is the biggest production I've ever worked on. So uh, I just went all out with you know throwing salutes to my influences. So I'm not really saying I'm trying to rip off every style of body and every style. I guess I am in some sort of shape or form, but you know I can do it, and I love being multi genre. I don't like doing the same thing. I could make this whole album sound like the Doom soundtrack, but it'd get repetitive and boring. So, you know, that's why I'm doing bits and pieces here and there, and that's why I love doing mixtapes as well, because it's it's fun to change shit up, you know what I mean? So, yeah, Shadow Man goes into the corn vibe, and when I first got the track, I'm like, yeah, all I got is corn fucking voices in my head. It took me a while to write this one, and no shit, I think it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, I just woke up, got out of bed, and I just heard this song in my head, and I sat down and wrote it in like fucking, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And that's because it's a touchy subject, because that's actually a true topic, and I'm not going to you know, go into massive stories about the, the real phenomenon, the Shadow Man. But if you Google Shadow Man documentary, there's one called The Nightmare, which I sampled at the start of this song. It's basically you got to do it. Sleep paral- paralysis. Per- paralysis. <laughs> Sleep paralysis. There it is. Okay, I'm going to leave that in there, because it's funny that I couldn't say it. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's something I've experienced on and off in my life a little bit. So uh, I had to write a song about it. I've always wanted to, but I never really had the right song to. So I guess he maybe have woke me up in the middle of the night and wrote it for me. <laughs> it just fucking flowed out. And the best songs do that. Now, very rarely does it happen. Most songs are pretty complicated to come up with. But once you get a title, you usually run with it really fast. But Shadow Man is something that haunts me and... I, I've not yet had one person message me about the Shadow Man song, but that's a good thing. <laughs> it's not real. It's only in my head. I know this. I want this more than ever. Track five, I Want to Be a Killer, featuring Cobra. This is this song right here uh, <laughs> is the first song recorded for this album. And uh, I, I, it, it was basically the idea behind me doing this album. I wanted to do the metal album I've never done before. I wanted every song to sound like I Want to Be a Killer. That was my first sort of, you know, kickstart. I got this song, which obviously was made by the band Cobra. Uh, they're a Russian band. And uh, they, they wanted me to to do a collaboration with them, and they sent me the song, and I loved it so much. I'm just like, I'll do this song for free if you just let me put it on my album as well. And they were just like, yeah. So they've released their own version of this song. It's different. It has more of a techno sort of drum kit to it. And this got released before Distorted Dimension, too. I was really paranoid that people would hear this song before. Shout out to Cobra, because you guys not only influenced me to do the story dimension but this song is fucking brutal um and i love it it was so fun recording this one recorded a music video for this the same day that we did uh the, the video for in your nightmares but um yeah we did that we shot that one first the same location and we're gonna mix it up make it look different um however i didn't really like it 
upon seeing it. I like the Indian Nightmares video, so that came out, and I was thinking maybe we could edit it out a few times. You, there, you may have seen like a 30 second video of it floating around. That's all I've released because that's the only parts I like of it. But um, yeah, that's that's uh, that was my second choice of a single for this album, and I, I know it is a, a popular song as well, so. I, I do give shouts for Cobra for that, and shouts to Strongman Pitches for, for helping me shoot two videos in one day. I basically, a <laughs> long fucking story of shooting that video, I got up at 5 o'clock in the morning, flew to this different city, Melbourne, which is a city over from here, an hour. We got to the set, not even an hour and a half, two hours later, I think like 10 o'clock in the morning, started shooting all the way down to like 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And then I flew back home that day because I had other shit to do. So it was like a rock star in and out, shot two music videos and came home. <laughs> that was massive. So that's that's behind the scenes shit right there. You don't know <laughs> that happens for this album. But yeah, I want to be a killer. It has a lot of depth. A lot of fucking fun doing that live. Track number six, Dark Triad, featuring Coffin Carousel. Well, actually, this is another same story as Cobra. I think this was the second song actually recorded for the album right after I Want to Be a Killer. And again, this was a collaboration for Coffin Carousel's album. Um, I think they had a had a different title for this. I think it's the Coffin Seat on his on his album when he released. It's called the Coffin Seat. Um, and it's a little bit different because he produced the drums. I produced the drums on Dark Triad. So it's the same exact same song, just produced a little differently. And um, I've worked a fair bit with uh, Dave from Car- Coffin Carousel. He does uh, guitar in three of my videos. You got him and Back to the Key Crusher, In Your Nightmares, and I Want to Be a Killer. So yeah, he's a, he's a cool dude, and uh, I've known him for quite a while. He's opened up for me once in Melbourne. So basically, he's my you know Melbourne guitarist who jams out my music videos. Cool ass dude, and yeah, he threw me this track and. Again, I'm like, I like this. Can I put it on my album as well? You know, I like doing that when I do collabs when they're cool. You know, it also gives them exposure as well. You know, double double promote the track, I guess. And uh, yeah, that was track number two on this masterpiece before it even began. So past the point of Track 7, 7 Billion Dead, featuring Human Pollution. Now, when I first started production of this album, before I was working with Grave Town, A Decade of Death, and all the metal, I had I Want to Be a Killer and Doc Triad. So uh, it, it's only relevant that I put 7 Billion Dead in line with these two tracks above it. So uh, you could have got a vibe of what the album was meant to sound like a little bit, because the rest of the album is pretty much produced by the same two guys. Uh, but 7 Billion Dead, I, I originally got hit up by Human Pollution, who was a band. Um, I'm not sure if they're active anymore, but at the time they, they approached me, they uh, disbanded and they uh, started producing beats for people. And uh, he said, you want to check out some beats? And I checked out his band and I'm like, I love your band <laughs> and uh, I want to sound like that. And he threw me some beats and I ended up being like... That song, one of the songs they, they, they did, I'm like, I want to cover that for my album. And they ended up throwing me some beats and we're working. I got to give him props because, you know, he went out there making me beats for a while. And I was actually really enthusiastic about these beats for a while that he sent me. Worked on and it just kind of just one day didn't click. I'm just kind of like, I'm not getting the right sound I'm looking for. It was kind of stressing. You know, I, 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 I get like that with a lot of my albums. You know, there'll be so many beats that I put on a playlist. I basically, when I create an album, I'm creating an instrumental playlist on my computer. I come back to it and rearrange it, put working titles on it and stuff like that, shift them around, up and down. It changes like fucking crazy. There's sometimes I delete and other ones come back and then, oh, it's fucking a mess, but it's fun because I already have my playlist and my album cover sitting there in front of me every day and sometimes it gets freaking annoying. That's why I like to go back to it every time, but 
Yeah, I gotta give a salute to the Human Pollution guys for spending so much time for trying to produce for this album. And they did great work. It just wasn't the vibe I was going for, you know, the doom and everything. And I kept throwing them, you know, I wanted to go heavier and darker. But Seven Billion Dead is such a beautiful song. And I said, I have to take this song with me, dude. And I'll give you credit. And it's like, it's so beautiful. I have to, you know, take this song and cherish it. And he let me do that. So surely shouts to that. Nobody's gonna look like you're living, I've forgotten So broke to death, I rip off my flesh I can't catch my breath, I'm so filled with stress I hold eyes to a little bit of nothing So high when well, my body keeps rotting Dead body bitches I'll be fucking I like birds, I will keep on catching, touching I know I'm disgusting Trusting to the point I'm busting Deep inside your thoughts, your thoughts And not distort your thoughts True story, I was listening to Cypress Hill And uh, Rock Stop Superstar And I'm like, I want to do a darker version of this and, um, you know, I always loved that song back when I was, was really young, but I want it darker as fuck. It's funny because some people know this already, but the first verse on In Your Nightmare is actually um, is on a Buckshot album. Uh, it's like a, like a multi-collab song with multiple people on it. I didn't originally write it for Buckshot, though. I originally wrote it for um, horrorcore icon Gangsta Nip. He approached me about doing a collaboration on his CD. And uh, I did it, and I fucking loved it so much. But as far as I know, he never released it. I kept looking for it. I never like heard from them again. So I'm thinking maybe he just doesn't like it. I don't know. So then Buckshot hit me up, and I'm like, fuck it. I got this first. I'll spit that on that. And then like, I know I heard this beat, and I'm just like, I hit up Buckshot. I'm like, yo, you know, I I, I need to respin this this verse on my own album if that's cool. And he's like, cool about it. So you know spin it on this and I spun it so much faster than I ever did because I know the verse of, I think it was like two years old by this point but uh yeah the the whole whole grip of the, of the beat was just like it took me a while to come up with something so as soon as I started with that recycled verse I think it was only like it was only eight bars to begin with when I first was so it's like a quarter well half of that first verse written I just spun it off that the rest of that is fucking history shooting the video was really fun too it was kind of insane because when we were shooting it i thought that uh the i want to be a killer video was going to be better than in your nightmares because in my head you know i was just sitting on a chair in a dark room with a camera in my face <laughs> and it turned out so fucking amazing um and i i'm blown away by the work strongman pictures do and shout out to daniel and rom from strongman pictures they do a lot of my basically every single one of my music videos um since meet the monsters you know the grinch God, Alice in Zombieland, Back to the Kid Crusher, we just do magic together. Check out Strongman Pitches. They do movies as well. I've been working on some of their movie scores and shit. But yeah, In Your Nightmares is the center single of this album purely because I think I fucking murdered it. Don't freak out, but I got this feeling inside of me that's more than love. Track 9, Digest You, aka The Last Lust, is actually inspired by the Queen of the Damned, if you could not hear it yourself. But uh, yeah, I wanted to do spin something on, you know, Queen of the Damned, because it's a fucking amazing movie, and that, and, um, you know, I, I, I knew I had the abilities here working with these producers that I could reach levels I've always wanted to. You know, I didn't want to, I, I was, didn't want to cover Queen of the Damned on this album. I almost did, um, this is a fun side story. Um, instead of this album, I was meant to be working on Black Circle Magic sequel called The Ascending. And I actually had about five, six songs in there and doing a cover of Forsaken was one of them and I already half produced the album. And then um, somebody said to me, a fan of mine, so you can blame this fan, I, I don't remember his name. And he's just like, you know, how many how many more sequels are you gonna be doing? You know, Meta Murder 2, 3, doing more Grinches, you know. When are you going to do something like Cannibal Clown, full length, original? And Distorted Dimension right here is the first completely top to bottom besides the one cover on there, original. 
it's the highest production value. I've never spent so much money in the studio making an album because I wanted this to be the monster, the monster masterpiece. So uh, back to the topic of Digest You. This song kind of got influenced by, well, the topic-wise um, comes off of several other songs I've written. You know, there's a lot of cannibals out there I've studied, especially during Cannibal Clown, Armin Maywez, which is a, a high high uh, fucking influence for Cannibal Clown. So, you know, I've always got that in the back of my head. You know, do something Cannibal Clown and that because this album, in my mind, has a Cannibal Clown influence. It doesn't really sound like it, but the way <laughs> I've never got the same feeling working on an album since Cannibal Clown like this one, so. See a wall, I paint it black. Everyone, I'm none of that. Happy couple paint them black. I ain't ever coming back. Fuck you all, I paint them black. Get something, I give it back. Fuck the sun, I paint it black. I ain't never thought of that. It's just misery in me, misery to be. Nothing left for me. I don't wanna see nothing but darkness sleeping through the day and night. Number 10, paint it black. Paint it black. Uh, originally, the beat was just something my producer was messing around with. He sent me the, the intro acoustic part. He's like, I, I made this and I don't know what to do with it. And um, I uh, instantly, as soon as he sent it to me, I think it was like midnight, because, you know, it was other other side of the time zones, whatever the fuck. I got up and I'm like, fucking, I hear something in my head. And I wrote the uh, the heavy, heavy pickup the second half of the song and I sent it back to him. I'm like, do something like this in the second half. We make it into a proper song, not an intermission, because that's kind of where it was going in intermission. And uh, yeah, he, he wrote it back and sent it to me I don't know, about a week later. And uh, I was uh, influenced by uh, this movie I was watching um, called The Last Witch Hunter with Vin Diesel. And they did a, um, I think it's only in the trailer, they did um, a cover of Paint It Black, the, uh, the Rolling Stones Paint It Black. And like when I first put out the track listing, everyone's like, are you covering Paint It Black? And it's not, you know, it's, it's inspired by that song. But uh, yeah, obviously it's not that. But uh, yeah, originally inspired by Paint It Black, I uh, had a, a fan of mine who recently um, overdosed. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of stories about it. I don't want to put his name out there or anything like that, but just reading about it, going through his Facebook and stuff like that, he was uh, really severely depressed. And I got into his mind about it and wrote about it. Uh, in my perspective, it was the same thing I did with the song Heartbeat. A friend of mine, friend and fan of mine died, and I, you know, got into the shoes of uh, his girlfriend of how she felt of losing him and how I would feel if I was in that position. That's usually what I do with a lot of my songs. You know, I watch movies, documentaries, or anything, get in the, the, the shoes of someone else, describe how I would feel in that situation, or, you know. But uh, yeah, writing Painted Black, there was different parts of the start and the chorus. I uh, rewrote it, re-recorded it a few times, and definitely think it's a good send-off. Now, for those who've got the digital version, that's where the album ends. But I put out there that if you got the CD version, there is three bonus tracks. Now, these three bonus tracks are out there it's just purely because I'm trying to get away from Spotify and the internet. Because if you did not know, Spotify basically throws me not even a fraction of a penny every time you listen to a song all the way through. And that's probably only if you're a premium member, too, because you're probably throwing pennies to the fucking advertisements you're listening to to listen to me for free on Spotify or Apple Music, wherever you're listening to. So I would highly appreciate it in the future. If you do like it, you know, spin it on Spotify. I appreciate you guys, even if you don't buy an album, but after you spin it on Spotify, if you do dig it, all the pain and sweat and suffering and money I pour in these productions would fucking be greatly appreciated if you threw me, you know, 15 bucks for the album, CD, hard copy. No people don't really buy CDs anymore, but it would be greatly appreciated that you had that. You can use it as a drink coaster. I don't know what you do with it. Put it in the car. That's where you, I like to put my CDs, you know? Okay, so if you got the CD version, track 11 is called Electromagnetic. This is a uh, experimental noise track that I made by myself. This is the only track besides white noise that I produced on this album and it's not even really a track it's a skit just like white noise electromagnetic to me is fucking it's 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 insane it's something you know you you hear in your head and you just fucking when you're going insane it's basically an interlude into the next song <laughs> <laughs> 
Number 12, Distorted Disorder. Now, this instrumental came across to me pretty early in production. I think that was maybe the fourth song I had for this album. Did not have a freaking idea how to write for it, but I did have the chorus in my head for a long time. Just one day, it just it came out. You know, therapy, fucking... It's basically should have been the single for this album because it could have been the track title, Distorted Dimension, but I didn't do that. Personally, I think the beat and everything about this song is just beautiful. It's fucking amazing. Track 13, Dead to the World. Dead to the World was originally just going to be an intermission with a couple little bit of here and there voices, which is basically what it is anyway. It's just a little outro, pretty simple, but uh, it's atmospheric and beautiful as well. You got to check that out. Overall, this album was the biggest production I've ever had. Was it my best album ever? I have to leave that up to you guys. Really, I'd like to hear in your comments below what your favorite Kid Crusher album is. And if it is something in the past, something that you heard 10 years ago, I completely understand. As for now, I'm working on a new Kid Crusher mixtape. I don't have a title for it yet, but it is mixtape style. Uh, it's various in uh, genre and uh, it does have covers on it so it's 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 kind of feeling like the metal murder mixtapes in a way but it has a lighter topic to it so i'm not sure what to call this yet people are telling me to call it metal murder 4 and i won't say no you never know <laughs> but uh i'm also simultaneously working on a metal side project which is untitled as well but uh i'm doing this out of fun for a playground that i can you know work on the Creek Crusher mixtape one day and the metal one the other day. So there's definitely lots happening. And as for shows, I have nothing booked at the moment, but I am ready to do America as soon as the promoters over there are ready to bring me because I am fucking ready to go. It's been way fucking long overdue. I'm here, and I hope you guys are still there too. Throw a comment, a like, subscribe, and I hope to see you guys soon. Appreciate you being a fan, and I uh, fucking love you guys so much. Peace. Stolen victim, distorted story, don't listen Happiness is such a mission When you're lost with no ambition Everything I've got is gone